Hey everyone, I'm Andrew Marston for the Euchre Media YouTube channel, and today we are talking about animation prototyping, which is when you've got some art to animate, and you just need to get the basic ideas of the motion blocked in quickly. And in a lot of cases, there are actually third-party tools that can help make this a faster process. So, with that in mind, today we are joined by the one and only Zach Lovett. His credentials are too long to list completely here, but in short, he's a highly respected technical director, instructor, and also the author of a lot of popular After Effects tools that you might have heard of, like Explode Shape Layers, he co-authored Flow, and now Flex. And having used Flex a bit myself, I 100% recommend it whenever you have objects that need to move or scale relative to each other in either lines or grids. In the first part of the video, we'll watch him block in the motion for some style frames by hand, and then he'll show how to use Flex to do the same animation quicker. And aside from this, I want to encourage everyone to pay attention to how Zach uses After Effects. Throughout the video, he drops numerous tips that'll save you time when you're using the program. And lastly, I feel a little obligated to mention that both Zach and I share a deep love for making terrible puns, so you've been warned. All right, so let's jump into the call. All right, so here we are with Zach Lovett. Thanks, Zach, for being here. Hey, thanks for having me here. Uh, you know, I actually, at one point, did myself consider a career in programming, sort of like yourself, but I didn't think I could get a raise. A, a raise. A, a raise. No, 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 I get it. I, oh. I get it. <laughs> I just don't know if that warrants uh, uh, promoting. Okay. I don't know if I need to make you feel good about that one. <laughs> All right. So anyway, let's just, we just lost every viewer. So it's just you we and did. I now. Um, so you're going to show us how you would animate these boards in two different ways. The client has provided us with um, these style frames and asked us to prototype a couple animations. So I'm excited to see what you're going to do. And more or less, I'm just going to let you go. And then I'm going to um, pop in if I have any questions. So feel free to take it away. Cool. So a few caveats here, a few notes. First, the idea here is just some simple motion prototyping of like this calendar week. We've got five squares, Monday to Friday. And first, I'm going to rig them up with all the raw shape layers and text layers, just like we're going to zoom in on Wednesday and take a look at an event. Then I'll do the same thing with flex. And they won't be exactly the same just because there's different controls, they work differently. But also, I haven't really been an animator in like four or five years. And so all of this is more conceptual for somebody who knows how to like make some really good keyframes, could do it and hopefully see the benefits of flex. So with that said, the overall idea is I want Wednesday to get big. And as it gets big and grows, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday are going to kind of like shrink and slink away. So let me just see. They all are shape layers, which is helpful. And now I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to do this. So we're going to figure this out on the fly. But I definitely think I'm going to make a null for each of these and just parent all of the content to each null. Let me just start with a, I'll come up to a Friday null. I apologize, my keyboard is clacky. You know, two null kind of sounds like tuna. <laughs> okay, touche, touche. What we're gonna do now is let's first um, let's first like figure out the desired scale of of Wednesday. And so I just want to figure out how big it's gonna get because that'll determine how and where I move each of my other layers to. So we're going to make a couple of keyframes. I like nice even numbers. I don't know, maybe for reference, let's bring it up to 400. Now let's say 350. And we'll bring this up to there. Or right, let's keep it square. 350, 350. Cool. So this is the sort of desired end result. And to do this, we now know that we need Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday to get out of the way. So I am going to go to each, again, this is like very simple stuff, but I'm just trying to quickly work here. And this is more of a conceptual prototype than anything else. Definitely gonna separate dimensions for all the nulls. Let's say 
Thursday, Friday. And I'm sure that there will be people watching this who are flabbergasted at how slow or inefficient I am at some of these things. I was actually just thinking, man, he must separate dimensions a lot because he just flew through that menu. Okay, well, so if you right click here, uh, if you can actually tap the first letter of each of these, and as long as it's unique, like S for separate dimensions, it just does it quicker. I mean, it's like the band The Offspring says, yeah, you got to keep them separated. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I really had you on. Yeah, the I um, <laughs> all all one one person who puts up with these puns is gonna love this. Yeah. Okay, so at this point, we're pretty much done. This is it. We're perfect. Hey, but it's a prototype. This, is, this it's a prototype. It's something. <laughs> so at this point, we've got the scaling up. Everything slides out of the way. I don't really like the lack of scaling on these. And again, this is going quick and sloppy deliberately. Um, so let's actually go to all of our cyan layers, except our Wednesday null. We're going to go to scale. And I'm, we're going to add... I'm just going to point out real quick for the people watching, if you didn't know you could do this, he just uh, clicked on the layer color, and then there is a menu option at the top called select layer group that, although it's at the top, a lot of people miss it, and it selects every layer that is that color of the label. So when I was making these nulls, I specifically made them cyan so that they're all the same color so that I could use this trick. I knew I would have to keep going back to selecting this group. And so that was a deliberate choice to help me out later. Mm. Uh, I personally also really like making my nulls guide layers, uh, which means they don't render, but nulls don't render anyway. The benefit though is that if I'm scrolling through these 30 layers in my timeline, I can really quickly look at the layer name, see where my nulls are, instead of trying to parse some other information. So right now you're scaling these nulls up with all of the planner pieces attached. Okay, I see where you're going with this. Yeah, and again, I'm just like, okay, well, why is this one super tall and these are still a little short and chunky? Um, which is relatable, I understand, but not entirely what we want. At this point, I am just kind of going super quickly to just sort of like explore, do some motion explorations. Mm. Like I like this. It kind of feels like um like a fisheye lens, but with rectangles. Not just when I'm doing rapid prototype, but like if I'm doing animation tests, this is very much how it would work. Like this isn't aesthetically pleasing. It's very chunky. Nothing's even. But I'm like first, what is the broad strokes of the movement? So I'm like, okay, this is what I feel like I want to happen. But this is so uneven and that's not really nice and so at this point is when i'm going to go in and just make these spacing a little bit tidier a little bit tighter more consistent is really the big thing so i know if i'm starting at 1248 i really like going in and just saying like give me some numbers and for those who didn't know um he just you can write arithmetic into property values like he yeah. just took so the original say, value and added or you just divided so the verdict for this uh thursday card despite the f there is that it's 300 pixels it's moved 300 pixels so i'm going to do this same thing 668 back where it was minus 300 hmm. so now i'm going to go to this one i'm going to double click here to get the value in a different viewer Say minus 200. All right, so it's still inconsistent, the gaps here, uh, which we could fix. We could use like the distribute, or we can't use distribute because this one's scaled, but either way, we've got some stuff. Now for the last trick here, what I'm going to do is have my Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Well, I want these to follow the shapes. And so, you know, if you want something to follow it, what you do is you parent it, right? So let me just parent the F over here. Whoa, okay, so that's not gonna work. What we're gonna do here, just for a little bit of a flex, <laughs> is, um, is I'm going to separate these dimensions and I'm gonna use some expression-y stuff so that they always follow. So first thing I'm gonna do with my separated positions here is I'm going to take the X position and just use the little pick whip over to the X position of the null 
And instead of parenting, parenting will have something similar, but parenting also messes with the scale and everything. And I don't want to scale the letter because, you know, this is being scaled up a lot. But what it means is that it's always just going to follow where the F is. Now, I have two options for the Y position. I can write like a really complicated expression here. So like look at the bounds of this box and to figure out, okay, well, where's the top of the box? Do that value with the scaling of it minus 50 pixels to put it above, but we're actually going to cheat this quite a bit. Put a keyframe at Y position and then another keyframe up at the top. It is not elegant, but it works. I'm just going to go ahead and repeat the process. I'm going to hit tilde on my keyboard to the left of the number row on a US keyboard to go full screen and pick what is here. So this is what we've got right now. And this is, I'm, I'm going to leave it like this for the first phase of shifting the dates around. I think this is okay. We convey the thought. Yes, there's easing to be done, but that's a, a separate facet. I now want to realign the Wednesday widget just so that I have a little bit more space. They've decided that we should have some text going in this big green box over here. So to do that, I need everything else to get out of the way. I'm going to start by this W event for, let's go to its position. Uh, let's separate it out. Actually, let's go to all these and separate them out. And we'll start by taking the box, go down to two seconds. Whoops, I hit the wrong button. And slide it down. Maybe 100. There's no reason this is 100. I just like round numbers. So that's now sliding down. And because everything else is scaling and shifting, I'm going to add some keyframes and make this half. Whoops, make this half the height. So it slides out of the way. Great. Now, the next thing I need to happen is I want all three of these to scale up vertically to take up more space. And so I actually think this is where I'm going to break out into a second null. So I'm going to make a new null. Come on down to W. We'll call this W event null. Typical Zach form, make it a guide layer. And I'm going to position this right at the intersection of the three layers so that it can control all three of them. And first, I'm going to take my event null and parent it to the full Wednesday day null, and then take my, not those layers, just these three layers and parent it to the event null. And now everything works the exact same as it did, but with my event null, I have this extra capability of scaling this up which is what I want. So let me just hide some other stuff. So now that we're here, I'm going to make these three bigger. We'll put a position, a uh, key from the scale, go up later. Let's make it equal. Cool, it scales up, we scale up. All right, that's pretty good. And so the idea here is that this, I want to like collapse it away sideways, and these two also to like expand sideways. But the way I'm going to do this is by actually going to these layers and changing their anchor points to the left, so that now when I scale this, it's going to scale in this way. And again, there's like a lot of ways to do this. Um, I'm just showing one way. So it I'll... would be really great if somebody invented like a script that you could like make grids so that you could easily move stuff around and it scales to the grid lines. Have you ever thought of that? That sounds like a really good idea. I'm going to I'm going to think about that. That sounds like a like a cool idea. Yeah. Um and if anybody at this point in the video has forgotten what I'm doing, I'm right now trying to show the sort of annoying way to do this type of animation before I can show a better way. And I'm I think I'm nearly done this phase. One thing I've noticed is that I need the green bar, the, the green box to get bigger than this blue one. So when I put the null here, what I really should have done is put it down here, this one up here, so that as I'm scaling up, what I can also do is scale the Y height down, maybe down to 100, and this event up to 600. There we go. Okay. 
So without any easing or prettiness, this is what we've got right now. Okay, you know, this is, this is beautiful. This is baby's first After Effects project. And of course, like it's slow, it's not eased, the offset, like it's super stiff, that, that's not the point here. The point here is looking at how you would scale layers dynamically and have items respond to the other elements in the scene and keep reflowing down. And the, I mean, the kind of the only way to do this is with like a lot of nulls, a lot of nulls chained together, scaling each one as you scale other ones away. There's some expression tricks you can get here, but at a certain point, this is effectively the way it works. It's sort of a hack. Yep. And it's also difficult to change, but it works. It still works. Yeah, and and that's the thing. Like again, this isn't about the animation quality, which I'm getting more and more ashamed of by the second. <laughs> it's just about the overall concept of how you would build this. And I think I'm going to leave it at this. Um, oh, one one last little tidbit. We'll go from two seconds. Uh, I do like working on whole seconds when I'm blocking out animation for what it's worth when I'm doing real animation jobs. It's just like, it's not about pacing, it's about movements and iteration. But you can see I just turned on this text layer for like the actual event text. So I'm gonna slide this over here. And now let's come in a little bit. Beautiful. Fades it in. This I is mean, from your planner, right? 11 oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. um, so. yeah. that, that, what, don't you do that at 11 a.m. though? Oh, like, yeah. I thought this was universal. I try oh, to take I, an hour a day. Poor plans, only an hour? Okay, <laughs> either way, uh, I'm gonna leave this as it is with some super slick Zach animation. Hire me. Um, okay, so let's just look at how I would do this with Flex. So as you can see, I've done a little bit of prep work beforehand just to make my life easier. And also, if I was animating this scene from scratch, a little bit more intention, I would probably pre-comp things out. And the idea here is just like, look, they're solid shapes. We can scale these pre-comps in X and Y, and it doesn't matter. Also, now I can drill into any of these days and modify stuff there without dealing with the full comp setup. So I've just prepped the comp by grouping everything up into big pre-comps that I've now scaled down to 25%. I'm gonna hide my date labels, and right away, I've got five items here. Now, Flex is all about making line rigs and grid rigs. And what I mean by this is, it's all about having your layers be responsive to the other layers. So instead of with all of our nulls, where we have to animate all five nulls, here we can animate one layer and have the others just respond to it. So in a really quick way, I'm just gonna do a line mode, which is not what we're going to do. I just want to show something super quick, which is, look, I have five things in a row. I want them responsive. I'm going to hit rig row. They're all up here. And now I can take my Wednesday. I've got this little controller. I can scale it up and the rest shrink down. Is there a way to get that gap back between them? There oh, is. Oh, you're way ahead of me. The so I have this little gutter control, which adds in the gap. Now, it's not the exact same thing. And we can absolutely go in here and animate stuff like, okay, well, I have a little scaling control. We can scale them up so you still get the height, but I'm not actually gonna use the line mode, but already just with one button and like just tweaking that gutter value, you can see that they're all responding just from the one. I can go into each layer and shrink them down or up as needed and the rest will just respond. That sort of flexibility isn't really doable without expressions. And Flex just makes that easier to apply. And you've pretty much already shown us two or three different prototypes that you could quickly send to the client for a quick gut check versus what we just did in the manual version. I mean, it's pretty much that. Like, you saw with all my little shortcuts of right clicking and making guide layers and separating dimensions, it was still, I'm sure, very painful to watch me work with all these layers. Hopefully, Flex is a little easier. But I'm just gonna undo all of this. Or you know what, I'm gonna hit this remove rig button that just unrigs all of this. Because line mode is neat, but it's really just for dealing with that single line and it's a little constrained. Uh, so as I mentioned, rigging a line like a row or column only gives us that one control of how heavy is this one element? Like how much weight does it have? And so I want finer control over where each line is and how it performs. So I'm actually going to use the grid mode. And grid works differently. 
it's still the idea of responsive layers, but whereas line, you just get a single value. Grid, you actually get controllers to affect how things move and where they move. So with that said, let's look at how grid works. First thing I'm gonna do is select my layers and hit rig row. And now we've got these two really long shape layers going on. And the way this works is I can grab these shape layers and stretch them up or down, and everything is going to be stuck between them and, well, remap. So the next thing I wanna do is be able to move things left and right. And to do that, I need to make columns. In this case, each layer should be its own column. So I'm gonna to go to the first one, hit rig column. Okay, hmm. now I have one row and five columns. It is a grid, which makes sense for the grid rig. If I select, let's just say like two of these controllers, I can slide them around and everything will respond appropriately. To make this a little easier to see, I'm gonna go back to my controller and increase the gutter, just like we were seeing on the other rig, just say about 30. And now we've got that little gap back. So at this point, we've got our five day blocks. And again, I'm gonna do the exact same idea now. I want this one to get big and I want the others to get smaller. So I'm gonna start by selecting these handles and these handles, go to position, and let's make a keyframe on exposition of each. <laughs> exposition. Oh. I'm uh, holding shift and tapping left and right to move it in discrete chunks. Now we're going to go to these two lines, go to position, add some keyframes in Y position, come back to one, and do the same thing. I was wondering if you were going to write an expression to link one of those uh one of those row controllers to each other so if you just drag one it does the other one that 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 would be another way to do it and part of i mean this is self-aggrandizing but part of what i think is nice about flex is that the way you move these controllers is totally up to you if you want to add keyframes you can do it if you want to add expressions that's fine it might get a little weird with parenting but that can be resolved with like their space transforms and things but like because it's all layers, you could, if you wanted, like put a null up here and parent it to the layer and it will be fixed. And so you have a lot more control or flexibility over how and where these layers sort of move. Mm -hmm. But already, right away, we've got that effect. And all we've done is add keyframes on each of these elements. And if I want to do that little sub animation, I will go into my Wednesday comp, which here we are, and I'm going to do the exact same idea. I select these layers, hit rig row, and just like we saw, it's there. But you'll notice that what happened was it kind of, it stretches this layer between the top and bottom. And so we can't see the bottom one anymore. That's not what we want. So what I'm going to do is hit this button here. In the utilities for grid, we have a way just to make one of these lines. It doesn't have any logic. It's just a shape layer. But if I move this up to this point in the middle, I can go to this layer and I'm going to try this and hope it doesn't break. If I hit rig row now, what it's done is it's flex has been like, hey, this green layer, there is a layer above me. There is a, low be a layer below me. So you should just stretch to the nearest row columns, like row, row rulers. And so I can do the same with blue, which isn't currently rigged up if I hit rig row. It's going to automatically detect these and now stretch to fit. Mm. And so in this way, again, it's a little bit more set up, but now I have all these independent controls for each of these elements. Now columns are a little different just for this main section. I can hit rig column and it'll do the same, oops, the same left and right. But because these two are in the same column, I don't have to deal with any of that like extra little subdivider. I can just hit rig column and they will be stretched in the middle there. So the last little tidbit here would be this bottom layer. Now the issue is flex tries to be smart. So if I were to say rig row, it'll find the nearest top thing and the nearest bottom and merge into it. But we don't actually want this layer to go all the way up. We want it to be shorter. So if you hold shift, as, as the little pop-up says, hold shift to create a new row for your layers. So if I hold shift and hit rig row, now 
I can move these mm. controllers independently or these controllers independently and they won't affect each other. So it's still in the same grid control system, but they're like independent ways of moving. And so with all of my layers set, I can now start animating to get that same sort of reflow. And because they're all in the same grid rig, even though they're separate rows and columns, my gutter controls are still going to work the oh. same for everything. And you'll note that when I change the gutter, this bottom one isn't going in on the sides. It's because it doesn't actually know that it's part of this column. So I'm just going to go ahead really quickly and change that. Now, because there's auto detect, if I hit rig column, it will be part of that column. But within each of your layer, we have this flex grid layer, which gives you these controls to say, you know what, just like let me manually pick which layer is the left, right, top, and bottom. So in this case, the left I'm seeing is column one. And if I select that layer, it's column three. So I can go to this layer and say, left is column one, right is column three. Um, and now that it's part of a column, it's got that same gutter going on. If you do it too much, it will go upside down, which <laughs> makes sense. Let's just add some keyframes. So I'm going to do these two first, just because it's what I did with the last scene. Go down here, go one second later. We're going to slide it down a whole bunch. And I'm actually going to slide the top down. And if anybody is wondering how he just quickly got to one second, if you type if you type just a single number, like one, oh. that'll go to your frame. But if you type 1.0, for example, now we're going to one second. And you can do that for the, the uh, minutes and hours as well. Yeah, so it, it like jumps to the next iteration of time. So yeah, one point point will go to the next full minute instead of one second. Like 1.0 is the same as one point. And so you could just use dots to quickly jump like decimal columns. It's weird little short codes, but I, I find it tricky. I mean, I find it handy, especially because I like everything to be even numbers until I go in and refine and tweak. But so I'm going to make this over here. And I know that I need this middle layer to also be animated. So go back here, shrink it down. Cool. We've got some keyframes. And you didn't have to mess with anchor points and externals. Oh. No anchor points, no extra nulls, no scaling and parent chains. So it's all here. And now that it's set up, we're going to bring our text back in. Handy shortcut, Control Shift Alt V toggles visibility. Ooh, I did you not know, know that. For oh, stretching wow. your hand. And again, all of this is US keyboard or US English keyboard. And now that this is here, I'll go here, position. Go down to two seconds. Oh, not position, opacity. Go back there, zero. It animates, this fades in. Really slow fade. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to my the comp that this lives in, clicking over here. But uh, if you want like the super, super Zach way of doing it, I would hit tab on the keyboard and it would bring up the mini flow chart and I can go right back to where the comp is used. Or if you hit tab from the parent pre-comp, you can see all the other comps that are used in it. So this is what we've got. And of course it's clunky. Yes, it's, I mean, yes, it's clunky. It's unease. It's not timed out well, but the idea is here. Mm. You can see all of the same components. And the only thing I'm dealing with for all of this is like 12 keyframes in the main comp for the main driving and like another 12 here for the sub shapes. Whoops. Mm -hmm. And so, it's just simpler in my mind to have something like this. Plus, at any point, you could go and say, look, we actually need some of this to be a little different. So let me just select these and I can bring them down here. And now it's going to animate down to the bottom right instead. So now that we've got our big planner here, we've just heard from the producer, Andrew, these Yucca Media Taskmasters are pretty rough, that we need to animate a series of like flowing little icon wibbly bits inside of one of the dates. Because on Tuesday, there's a lot of alerts and that's crazy. So I'm gonna go into the Tuesday pre-comp and there's actually a little event here for when we want our icon flare. So I'm gonna go inside of that and I've got a rectangle. Cool. What the hell? Inside of elements, inside of icons, we have all of our little icons. We solo them, we got a ticket, we got a suitcase, we got a 
people, um, I guess the icons tell us what it is. But either way, the idea here is that we want all of these just be arranged in a line. And thankfully, we have flex. Who knew? Mm. It's like an as seen on TV commercial where the exact setup you can answer with your tool. How crazy <laughs> is that? So what I'm going to do is actually, I don't want ticket. We're not really traveling with the whole COVID thing. Um, so I'm just going to take these items here and just go to my line mode and hit rig row. Oh, that's it. Nice. Uh, I mean, that's not it, but like, look, we've just done the bulk of the work. And as we saw before, we can come into each of these layers and scale them up and the others will respond. So I'm just going to, and maybe this is a little silly, uh, with pseudo effects, you can't just keyframe them all. Let's go into each layer weight, add a quick keyframe. Okay, so if we play this out, we've now got our little icons coming in in whatever order. And I'm actually going to shrink all of this down. And uh, for those who don't know how you just shrank all those keyframes, the timing, mm -hmm. can you explain quickly how that works? Yeah, so when you have a bunch of keyframes, if you just click and drag them, it's gonna move, well, all the keyframes. If you hold Alt or Option on your keyboard and click away from where the playhead is. So right now the playhead, this little current time indicator is at zero. And I'm gonna click the last keyframe, like the furthest in time. If I hold Alt and drag, it's going to proportionately scale the timing of the keyframe. All of the, the relative timing, all the values are the same. It's just now instead of this animation taking a second and a half, I can make it take, I don't know, 10 seconds and we'll fall asleep, but all the animation preserved. So it's a really quick way to first block at the animation, then grab them all and just make it snappier, which you still wanna go and refine the values, but you get this idea. Mm. So we've got this here and this is fine and all, but I've just heard from Mr. Andrew that we actually need to add that ticket back in because COVID is fixed. Mm. And now I just don't have my little ticket in the rig, so I'm going to have to add it in. Now, it's a little annoying because like I rigged everything up and blah, blah, blah. But with Flex, you can hold Shift again, and click Rig Row, and it's going to add in that icon into your existing scene. And so that's it. You can just take other layers, throw them into your rig, and everything else works the exact same way. Like we still get that same animation. You do see that our layer starts existing. That's just because I haven't animated the layer weight yet. But if I bring this over here, drop it down to zero, really easily, we've just added this into the whole system. That's that's very flexible. Ooh. I, I, I'm catching on to, to this pun game that you've been doing. Oh, it's it's pretty good. And you know, they're they're not shape layers, they're PNGs. So if we wanted to set the color, we would do like we could apply a fill effect or you know, somebody made this thing called Swatcheroo, which I've like heard of it. I've heard of it. Let's you select some layers, just hold a button. That's actually a terrible color. I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> um, maybe this nice lavender. Uh, yeah, actually I'm okay with that. Hmm. Quick apply colors and stuff. We'll close that. We don't need to see it. Cool. And I just wanted to give you a tip. Um, just, I'm pretty sure you don't know this. If you wanted to quickly animate the interpolation of those keyframes with like a visual sort of representation, there's a, there's a plugin called Flow. Yeah, that I, is, I use it all the time. I can't open my extensions window right now because oh. there's stuff there that shouldn't be seen. But if I could, mm. I would open it up, show flow, and it'd be a wonderful tool. So every, where can people where can people find Flex, Zach? On AE Scripts and AE Plugins, or at aescripts.com slash flex. It is there. I have a whole bevy of tools and little helpful utilities to make your lives easier. Mm. To name a few, for those, if you've never heard of uh, Zach's, any of Zach's plugins, Explode Shape Layers, Flow, Flex, uh, those, uh, in my opinion, are uh, essential. They pay for themselves quickly. Whenever people ask me what essential plugins that I work with, that I feel like every After Effects user should have, Explode Shape Layers, Flow, I uh, think you gotta have it. There's a bunch. Yeah. I, I have this very, simple motif of rows of buttons to do things. 
But hey, all sorts of stuff. Uh, it works. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you so much, Zach, for for doing this, and I hope that everybody out there goes and buys Flex. And yeah, thanks. All right. Thanks for having me. Okay, I'm going to stop recording. All right, so we made it through all the puns, and hopefully you guys learned a thing or two. Thank you very much, Zach, for taking the time once again. And if anyone out there has a project where objects need to move in correlation with each other, then I highly recommend that you consider buying Flex. So what else am I supposed to say? Subscribe to this YouTube channel, click the notification bell so you don't miss a video, and click the like button on this video so that YouTube knows to promote it to the entire internet. All right, thanks guys, and have a good day.